from WBBZ TV Sports. It's time to beat the champ. Now, here are your hosts, Paul Peck and Sue Navoitsky. With Janelle Saban and Hall of Fame bowler Sue Navoitsky, my name is Paul Peck. It's our second week here in Salamanca. Beat the champ on the road at Central Lanes here. What did we learn from week number one? And at the very least, we learned that one of the guys who bowls here all the time, Jim McGarry, is going to lead us off here today. Well, we learned that if you bowl league in a house, that you should come to the qualifiers <laughs> and you should try out for the show because you're going to have a, a bit of an idea of what's going on out there and it might give you a slight advantage. Yeah, it sure seemed like Jim took advantage of knowing these lanes, which can be tricky, but there are some great bowlers on the line, including two of the three that are going to bowl today, which are also Salamanca guys. So we'll have Ryan Colburn, we'll have Chuck Jagosinski, of course, one of our most successful Beat the Champ bowlers, and Billy Thompson. So Jim McGarrah will have his work cut out for him, but we know that not just Jim, but Ryan and Billy are going to have the home lane advantage. Yeah, they definitely have that hometown spirit, and they bring along a great crew with mm -hmm. them, so they like to make a lot of noise and cheer these guys on, and that helps in the confidence level of these All guys, right. too. Well, will it be the Salamanca stars that wind up being the story of week two? here? Well, we'll find out. Central Lane, Salamanca, week two. Let's get rolling. Well, a couple of guys who likely know each other very well, bowl with each other, against each other, and certainly um, know this place will get us started with our returning champion, Jim McGarra, taking on Ryan Colburn. Both of these are guys that bowl here in the league at Central Lanes in Salamanca. So the question to you, Sue, is where's the advantage? We, we've seen Jim take advantage of knowing these lanes maybe against guys that didn't. Right. But these guys both know, know the lanes, right? Right. So I would predict high scores. Okay. Because I think they're both pretty loose, both pretty confident. Um, they both know what bowling ball to take out and play, and they're in the sweet spot of the day. I mean, these lanes have been bowled on a little bit. They haven't been overplayed on. This is going to be, this should be our highest scoring time right now with two guys that are familiar and just where we are in the lane condition. All right, well, that, uh, that should set us up for you at home for watching and knowing you're going to get a pretty good one out of this. So, uh, you know, and again, as we talked about a little bit on last week's show, these are wood lanes. They are old school. They're a little beaten up in places. Um, so that tends to pop its head up in as far as an advantage or a disadvantage. Um, and we've also kind of noted that they continued that seven is uh, less tight than eight is because as you move from the left to the right here, they get a lot tighter. Yeah, These and, guys will know that. And the only great equalizer, again, is carry. I mean, still have to kick out those those side pins and anybody that bowls here will say that carry is the challenge. So as you move along the lane, it changes your angle of entry a little bit, but these guys will be real good at staying in the pocket. Oh, and a nice little late fall and the 10 pin gets Ryan Colburn his first strike of the day. And there's technology for everything. So um, this is uh, one of those situations where you can easily predict how it's going to go. You look at the bowlers, you see what kind of players they are, and you can kind of get an idea of, of how to prepare. How about Jim McGarra? That strikes in the first two frames. Uh, in his last match a week ago that he beat Jeremy Zimmerman, he bowled at 265. He had eight strikes of his final nine rolls. So that's now 10 strikes in his last 11 rolls here on Beat the Champ on these <laughs> lanes. Fourth appearance on our show for Jim McGarra, who is from right here in Salamanca. Two wins and one loss is the record. Great and shot. And the strike run continues. He did bowl a 300 in qualifying here for this show. So did that make 12 in a row by your cal calculations? That makes, uh, well, he missed the, he missed the, the fill ball of oh, okay. the 10th frame right, well, then he's starting a week over. ago. And he's starting but all over. But still, that's, that's, uh, that's 11 strikes in the last 12 times he's towed the line there. And that one a little bit hooky for Ryan Colburn to the left will leave him the 6'10". Well, he throws it a little different. I think that Jim's got a real good look right now. And Ryan, you don't want to see that happen. That just tells you that's a little early hook right there. So it's time to move in. But he, I don't think Jim's going to give him a whole lot of space. And only one pin there so an open in the third for ryan colburn 38 years old from jamestown 
employed as a gauge technician at SKF Aero Engine. I'm not sure what that is, but it sounds like Ryan has to be really smart and talented to do it. So good for him. 223 average for the 38 year old who bowls regularly here on Friday nights. Nice shot. And right back with a strike in the fourth. Also bowls on Thursdays at the Jamestown Bowling Company where we will be with our show in a couple of months. We are doing a uh, sort of southern tier tour here. Salamanca, Fredonia, Jamestown. That's good, yeah, good and it's fun. for these we local guys. It. Yep, we they love doing it. They don't have to move around so much. And that's four in a row for local guy Jim Magara, 48 years old, from right here in Salamanca, does sales for Stroman's Bakery is the occupation. Got a good cheering section here as you see Janelle Saban manning the Castellone Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram scoreboard. So in Jim's case, this is his fourth appearance on the show. He was on twice in 2019, our first time here, and now twice in 2020. Wow. Ryan has been on twice. He was here in 2019 and back in 2020. Five in a row for Jim McGarra. And well, and they don't have the jitters either. They know what to expect. You know, it's like got to kind of catch everybody, give everybody a break the first time they're on. But now um, they're getting to be veterans when it comes out here, anyways. Great That's shot. a nice double for Ryan Colburn. Has his fiance Vanessa here and his parents Randy and Ellie cheering him on. Ten career, three hundred games. Three 800 series with a high 857 for Ryan Colburn. As I mentioned, the other time he's been on our show was when we were here for the first time in March of 2019 when he wound up bowling and losing to Sean Mosier. What a nice little run here last year. Oh. oh, that one, not only did that ring around the 10, it like flipped up and over the 10. Oh, that sure did. And that is tough when you're already down 42 pins. I mean, yeah, when you're watching your you throw opponent it good, yep. hit, hit the first five. Sixteen pound ball for Ryan, a little bit heavier than maybe we've seen for most of the other yeah, guys. Yeah, you don't see too much of those anymore. Although, you know what, Jim uses a 16 pounder as well. This feels like a good time to take a short break. We'll be right back with more action on Beat the Champ. Instant Replay on Beat the Champ is brought to you by Transit Lanes and Keglers. Join us for bowling, food, and drinks. Welcome back to Beat the Champ. Let's get back to the action here on WBBZ TV. You've, I think you've told me 15 is the norm, correct? Yeah, it's gotten to be the norm. But, uh, you know, these are bigger, stronger guys, so they can handle that 16-pound ball. That's six in a row for Jim Magara. He's got great ball speed. I mean, he's just got, um, he's that perfect angle, and it's just amping it up pretty good. good. Just looking real good right now. 22 career, 300 games, 10 career, 800 series for Jim Magara. A little deeper on lane seven. Oh, oh, a lot of pins flying everywhere, but not taking out the seven. So the strike run ends at six in a row in this match for Jim McGarra. 14 strikes over the last two matches. Yep, and then as you move in a little bit, you, a lot of times you're gonna get a high percentage carry on this swisher hit. He just, a uh, little, little bad break there, really. So that, it wasn't, that wasn't a bad adjustment, it was just bad break? Um, I really feel, well, Ed, you're going to have to move or you're going to go high. So he's going to be inching in, keeping his eyes in, and the result will be a little lighter hit. But like I said, that's a very high percentage uh, strike. So every now and then the seven pin just gets stood up. Darn seven pin. Well, that seven pin took a beating as Ryan <laughs> Colburn gets the strike. We got a strike. lot of power out there, don't we? Yes, we do. Yep. Yes, we really do. I. I particularly in Jim's case, he's a bigger guy. I feel like that bowling ball kind of looks like a golf ball in his hands. <laughs> it does. Fifty-two pins separating these two, though. It's a big league for Jim. There's 
there's another there's one. There's that swisher hit yep. with it going down. Now explain that for people that hear that and may not know what you mean by that. Because um, you're really pretty much relying on the pins to swish. I guess that's how it, it got its term. But it's just a light hit and it's so done the it. pins are doing more, almost more of the work yeah, than the ball. Yeah, sort of shooting the, the head pin to the left there because it's coming in real light and it's supposed to take out the seven. And, you know, most of the time, like I said, that's a very high percentage hit. Another right strike for Jim. It. Winner of this match takes on our most successful beat the champ bowler in our fifth year. That's Chuck Jagosinski with 37 beat the champ wins. He is sitting and waiting to see who he's going to bowl in match number two. And we know that's one person that could negate the home field advantage is someone yeah. that um... he's really, really good. Oh. Well, Jim knew it right away. He knew that one got away from him. So he's got some work to do here. Yeah, he definitely pulled that one in. What do you want to do here? Take the two. He's got too big of a lead to worry about it. And that's exactly what he'll do. So it goes down as an open, but not a not a bad nine uh, nine pins there in the ninth frame for Jim Magara. Plus. Um, the two pins were important because Ryan can strike out for 237. That would be his highest potential, and that would force Jim to have to uh, spare strike. Well, there's strike number one that Ryan needs in the ninth frame. And to tie. So anything less than that would have forced him to double. So a little, little drama here still Absolutely. going on in this one. That's because Ryan has bowled really well and not letting the fact that Jim started with six strikes kind of get in his head at all. You can see all that on display on the Castellone scoreboard. Great point. You always got to remember there's two halves to every game. What happens in the first half can doesn't necessarily have to repeat itself. There's another one in the 10th frame. Boy, Ryan is not going down without a fight. This is huge. I mean, forcing Jim to have to strike in the 10th uh, frame, whether it be spare strike or strike spare, uh, in order to win, he could force Jim to have to double. But he's still got to get a couple more strikes here. Two more. Count is very, very important. Mm -hmm. The strike's important, and the count on his fill ball is very important. All right, so second roll of the 10th frame for Ryan. That's a tough oh, break. Oh, and there's that seven pin. Yep, that seven pin wouldn't go down. And that will make it a lot harder it'll, for Ryan. Yeah, it'll make Jim's job a little bit easier, but he's still going to have to fill the frame. All right, so Ryan's job here is to make sure he gets this pin. And he does. So Ryan will post up a 226 final score and now Jim Magara, Magara rolls into 10th frame yeah, meeting. He, he has to have a spare. You know he's coming off of um, you know coming off a split so he has to wipe that out of his mind and uh, make a good shot here. And there's your strike to good finish enough. off the victory. So what an impressive performance for Jim McGarra and second consecutive big time scoring output for Jim. And that sets up what should be a really fun match. Jim McGarra and Chuck Jagosinski. It's next. We'll check in with Ryan, talk to him about his performance and get you ready for that match when Sue and I return with Janelle Saban, Central Lanes in Salamanca. Well, Sue Nowoyski predicted high scoring in this match. She was right, 237 to 226. 226 is a pretty good score. It doesn't work when the other guy throws 11 pins better. Hit my average, but uh, Jimmy threw a great game. Just started out so big that put the pressure on me early, and I didn't help myself there in the early on. So, But you finished strong, even yeah. seeing him knock all those strikes out. How do you kind of maintain your focus in that? Well, it's just Jimmy. I like to make him sweat, you know, no matter <laughs> what. Just make everybody earn it. I mean, he made me earn it and I didn't do it, so I tried to give it back to him a little bit. All right, so everybody out there watching is starting to get to know what Jim is all about. You've known him 
a lot better and a lot longer. What what can we expect from him? Uh, a lot of protein. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just, he's that. You don't get that big without eating that protein. So, other than that, no. He he likes to have fun. He, but he, he gets serious when he has to, and he, he does pretty good. So. Uh, protein will have to wait till lunchtime, right? <laughs> oh, he'll have plenty of protein later, I'm sure. I don't mean that kind of protein. But, uh, Ryan, nice game. Always a pleasure. Thanks, buddy. Glad you're coming. We got bigger fish to fry on Friday, so that's right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, Ryan's going to continue to bowl here on the Friday night leagues, and he's going to continue to cheer on his buddy Jim McGarra because it's McGarra and Jagosinski, and it's coming up next from Salamanca. Well, this one should be fun. The red hot hometown guy, Jim McGarra versus Chuck Jagosinski, our most successful beat the champ bowler. And this is a rematch from a year ago here in Salamanca when Jim beat Chuck. So a lot on the line in a very interesting match. Number two here from Central Lanes in Salamanca. Yep, we have the lanes breaking down just a little bit. These bowlers are getting pretty deep on the lane. That's it. What has impressed you the most? What have you observed uh, that jumps out at you about the way Jim McGarrett is bowling? Um, well, he's got a really good disposition that helps him um, stay calm and not panic. But he's um, got great ball speed. And most of all, I would say it's his disposition because there's been weird breaks, those swishy sevens and stuff like that. Sometimes bowlers can let that really get under their skin. And I would say that kind of takes that in stride. Nothing ever gets under Chuck Jagosinski's skin. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> 34th appearance on our show for Chuck Jagosinski. That is second to Mike Zarcone by only three, but no one has won more than Chuck Jagosinski has 37 times against 20 losses in those 34 appearances. That's number one on our wins list. Well, he's smiling and relaxed right now, so he... That's a good sign. It's a good sign. Maybe the key for Chuck is to be in the car for an hour and get himself in the proper frame of mind. That's a tough break for Jim, and that, you heard the crowd feel it as because well. Because it was such a good shot. That was just a great shot. Anybody who's thrown a bowling ball feels the pain of that shot right there. <laughs> And at least Jim McGarra finishes it off with a spare. So, Except for Chuck, he didn't feel any pain on that That's that right. Title. He's the one guy who doesn't, <laughs> can't, shouldn't feel any sympathy. There's the uh -huh. Castellone Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram Scorebridge and El Saban keeping us up to date on the early, early results of this match. And you said it. I gave you full credit. You predicted a high-scoring match between Ryan and Jim in our first match, and it exactly was 237-226. Feel like you want to make a prediction in this one too? Well, predict some frustrating uh, single pin leads well, for Jim is, McGarrett. This is, this is interesting because Jim is now have, has to make some moves, and whenever you make moves, you lose. You have the potential to lose your scoring potential, like we see, saw right here, uh, a week ten that we haven't seen before. But it's because he's being pushed in, and I can see in practice that lane seven is really starting to hook a lot. So these guys have to play it. Uh, much deeper, changing your angle of entry to the pocket. So, Chuck coming onto this pair, this is the only thing he knows. So again, I almost think that leans a little bit towards Chuck and the advantage um, spectrum. Uh, oh, there's not that, quite. There's that swisher. Yep. Not quite. A little wobble out of the seven, but it would not go down. There's the stats on Chuck Jagosinski, 52 years old from Lancaster. Attica Correctional Facility is the employer. Bowling for 44 years with a 235 average. One of the most accomplished and successful bowlers in all of Western New York. Not just on this show, but on any bowling center he rolls into. Well, that one never quite turned enough on it. Well, that's that's where we're seeing the lanes being um, getting dry, and it's pushing them in. So 
he rolled the oil a little bit a little bit too long because he's in very very deep so he would have to move his eyes a little bit try to catch a little bit of the dry and uh, they're both going through their own little um, transition there with lane seven hooking as much as it does all right so strike strike spare spare for chuck strike spare spare for jim frame four for the salamanca native and another ring around that 10. A little bump, but not enough. Yeah, this is one of the challenges of, of being pushed into all that oil. Is It rides the oil line just a little bit longer and delays its hit into the pocket, and you get the week 10. His mom and his sister Kelly cheering him on here at Central Lanes. But because he's a regular here, got a lot of fan support for the guy they call the hammer. The one good thing is it's actually, actually Chuck is transitioning as well. So right. um, they're changing for him too, where, you know, I kind of maybe thought that they were the same from practice, but it seems like they're actually changing even as we go along this early in the match. So that should play to Jim's benefit because he's probably seen these changes more often. Is that right? That was perfect. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. But again, even in league, if you think about it, even if, if you, they're probably only four-man leagues of three games, these lanes have already seen more than that. So he is kind of in, in territory, more on charter. Wait, hey. Chuck's got the pocket lined up, but he just seems to be leaving that 10 pin. That's because of all the oil that's in the middle of this lane. Three nights a week, regular bowling in leagues around Western New York for Chuck Jagosinski. There's the famous boxing, bowl, boxing glove spare ball that does its job with the knockout in the fifth frame. 69 career 300 games for Chuck Jagosinski, a high of 849 and 46 8 100 series oh. and a new ball that he's using since the last time we saw him too right i know that um his wife michelle said she left me a little note and uh he got a new bone ball which is a new nugget which is what we like to call yeah, it we, you know, <laughs> we, we run out of nuggets because chuck's on the show so much this looks like a good time to take a break we'll be back with more beat the champ right after this Welcome back to Beat the Champ. Two-time Buffalo Bowler of the Year is Chuck Jagosinski amongst the many achievements in his outstanding career. Last time we saw Chuck was uh, down in Bradford. It's been since November since he's been on our show, on, which is ball. unusual. That's a big strike in the sixth frame for Jim Magara. Normally, Chuck is one of those guys where we see almost every month, it seems like, or every other month, so it's been a couple of months since we've had him. But as I mentioned, that's two years in a row that he has qualified here in Salamanca. And the second year in a row that he'll square off with Jim. Yep, and uh, Jim just took the lead with that shot. He's up five now, can make it 15 with a strike here. Right. We got that one way out. That was a break because that 10 pin was looking to stand up and make that a split. So that was actually a, a good break that if you notice he's playing close, way close to third arrow and that one really got out. That one got out to probably right of the second arrow. So that was, uh, that was a big oopsie right there. And the spare pick up in the seventh frame. It's been, uh, it's been a clean roll so far for Jim Magara with three strikes and four spares. Chuck, four spares and two strikes. Well, that puts Chuck back in the driver's seat here. There's a big seven frame strike for Chuck. And don't think Chuck doesn't know it. He knows that a double here puts him back in the lead, so. His wife Michelle and his son Noah cheering him on here, making the drive down from Lancaster. Big decision here on lane seven, because he went light made a move and went high. So now he's got to find his, his happy place here on this lane. Oh. I'm not quite sure that's the happy place. Well, but. no, it's a good shot. He got to the pocket, but as we can see that by the pin collision on lane seven, we've seen quite a few of those light hits not carry now, so. Well, that was a little close. All right, we got a little back and forth going here, yes, so a, a double here can put Jim back in the driver's seat. 
All right, so Jim moves to the eighth frame. There you get your score update on the Castellone scoreboard. That kind of missed the pocket that time. That almost went straight, didn't it? Yeah, because they're in that oil and he threw that hard. That shot right through the break point and kept on going. So we're going to go into the ninth frame with a almost an even match. Jim will have a two pin advantage if he makes his spare. And he Great does. Fair. So all here right. we go, final it's like two frames. all over again. It's just like going, it's just Two frames, two, two pins. Two pin advantage. Yep. yep, two pin advantage, two frames to go. Can Jim get his third win in a row? He's won two, looking for a third. And then he'll match up against another Salamanca bowler in Billy Thompson. So Jim has actually chosen to finish this match. So he's going to leave it up to... Uh, Oh, that's perfect. Big strike. So now he's letting Chuck. Chuck's going to get up and have to uh, dictate the finish of this match. If Chuck strikes out, Jim's going to have to strike out. Just watch and enjoy this one. Perfect. This is where Chuck Jagosinski shows how clutch and talented yep. he is. This is match a match on the right line, here. clutch time, no room for error. That's what makes him so great. Now watch this. He's getting up on a lane that he has not had, that has just been a, a big question mark for him. He has struggled on lane seven, needs to strike right here. Now what does Chuck do? Got it. Yep. Some serious pins flying all over the place. Great shot right there. Yep. Tenth frame continues for Chuck. So basically, whatever Chuck does, Jim has to do the exact same thing. Got another one. Oh, big trip four. One more to finish it out. And then Chuck watches, as we all do. Count is still key here. He wants to get. He wants to get all 10. And he got it. How about that? Little slow motion as that one came rolling over. And it's Chuck Jagosinski posting up a 223. That is the finish of a great bowler right yep. there. Four consecutive strikes to finish it out. So that's about what Jim's going to have to do. Yep, Jim D needs double and nine. Oh, boy. Oh, you didn't like it, did you? Oh, no, it went left. Oh. He didn't like it either. That was, <laughs> that was a nervous shot. I think the look on his face tells you that, doesn't it? Yeah, well, we don't have a camera on Chuck's face right now, so that's probably a good thing. <laughs> Yeah, that really was left. It was straight. It was left, but it, it was, was so just, strong and powerful. It, it, it was just blew so bad. Out. It was good. That's yep. about it. Second roll of the tenth frame. Can he use this? Nope. Chuck is our winner. Wow. How about that? Just that single pin that he didn't get the roll over to take down like Chuck did, and that's the difference in the match. Yep. Wow. That was a, a, a battle of two great bowlers right down to the end. It stinks that we're going to have to talk to Jim about a loss, but it winds up being a victory for Chuck Jagosinski narrowly over Jim McGarra. We'll talk to Jim and get you ready for match number three when Sue and I return more Beat the Champ right after this. What a great match, 223 to 214. It comes down right to the end. You said you're out of breath, so you can just nod if you want to yep. answer the questions, okay. Jim. How great a match, how much fun was that? I know that you fun. didn't win, that but was it was fun. fun, wasn't it? I stole one in the 10th, and then I threw a good one, didn't carry. Uh, you, you matched up with Chuck last year. You got the best of them. You, you knew you'd have your work cut out for you, wouldn't you? Oh, I did, absolutely. 
Um, how much fun do you, uh, this was a nice little run. We, we got a chance to see you really bowl well. How much did your advantage of knowing this place come into play? Um, I think a lot. I mean, it's, it's like a house shot. And uh, I mean, I don't even got to practice. It's, it's right out there, you know, where I know where it is, you know? Right. So. All right, well, you bowled like that. Thank he you. sure did, Paul, didn't he? Oh, he did, yeah. It's, it's a, they, call him, they don't call him the big show for nothing, Paul. That's, <laughs> that's what it is. That's why everybody's here, is to see him. But, uh, yeah, no, he bowled two phenomenal games. I, can't, I mean, he had a, he controlled his own destiny. That's all you can ask for at the end of the game. So, you know, it just didn't work out. But uh, here's a little consolation prize, Jim. Hey, thanks. Thank Appreciate you, you bowling and supporting Thank us. Thank you. Yeah. All right, all right. Well, you, you just got to take the big show on the road here. We got to see you somewhere else, right? Oh, yeah. we, we know you can do it here. Yeah. We got to see you get yeah. on the road. All right, well, yeah. there you go. Hopefully, we'll see Jim as part of our event next month in Fredonia. That was a great match. Let's see if we've got another great one coming. Chuck Jagosinski, Billy Thompson, it's next. From here in Salamanca, beat the champ back right after this. <laughs> Final match of week number two here in Salamanca means Chuck Jagosinski will be challenged by another bowler who's a regular here at Central Lanes. It's Bill Thompson, and it's Jagosinski that will start us off. Wow. His victory over Jim McGarry in our last match, the 38th win here on Beat the Champ for Chuck Jagosinski. As I mentioned, that is number one. Um, now moving two ahead of Mike Zarcone on our all time win standings here in year number five. Haven't seen Mike in a while. No, Mike's, it's been, uh, haven't had Mike uh, on in a bit. I'm sure as soon as he hears these within range of Chuck, he'll get right back to try to get back on the show. Very nice shot. And Bill Thompson, 67 years old from Jamestown and a regular here at Central Lanes in the Friday Night Leagues, gets started with a strike. So yeah. again, this is another guy who knows this place and we saw it work pretty well for Jim McGarra to get himself a couple of wins and almost a win over Chuck. Uh, again, is that how big an advantage can that be for Bill? Um, well. We're, we're in transition, and I think transition is tough for anybody because these lanes are changing fast and hard right now. And he's way deeper on lane seven, as we would expect. Oh, look at that oh. thing wobble back and forth and not go down. It's a great shot. He's using, a, now you're seeing the balls come out with um, a lot of um, uh, the, the pearlized balls. If you see what he's throwing, he's throwing um, a green shiny ball that has a pearlized um, design to it, and that's to, um, to now because the lanes have dried up quite a bit and you want to get through those fronts cleaner because right. we talked about a little how more slide a little more uh, exactly. a, a, little, a little more like that a little more skid through the front yep it's a spare for bill thompson who is making his beat the champ debut here today and of course far from that for chuck jagosinski in his 34th appearance on our show right locked in and lined up right into that pocket and another strike for chuck yeah, Chuck's in his wheelhouse right now because he can uh, he can stay to the he's, he can stay to the right longer than other people. Gets really clean through the front of the lane. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't have to make quite the amount of adjustments it that won't, other people do. It won't be as severe for him as for someone who rolls ball early or op say opens up the lane. Like right now, how you play the front of the lane will affect how how difficult transition is going to be for you. So the cleaner you get through the fronts, uh, the less changes you're going to have to make right now. Well, look how deep on the lane he's standing. And to the left as well. Mm -hmm. Slides a little bit to the right. And that was a nice shot by Bill. Right down the pipe where he wanted it to go. So he's got a little bit of a drift to the right that makes him, um, you know, but it looks really severe when he stands up. And then if he has to move a lot deeper, that ball return will get in his way on the, on the right lane. So that's another thing when you when you drift, that ball return can can be an obstacle for you. Bill's retired, but he has been bowling, and maybe now more so than ever that he's retired. 60 years of bowling. Nice shot. 
three nights a week, uh, two nights a week at the Jamestown Bowling Company, where we will be in a couple of months with Beat the Champ, and then Friday nights here at Central Lanes. I see a lot of these guys do that, go between Jamestown and here. That's four in a row for Chuck Jagosinski, who seems to be cutting back on his bowling because he only tells us he's bowling in three leagues a week right now. Wow. Yeah, Sundays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. That's uh, like, uh, usually he's one of those six night a week guys. He is. Five frames, five strikes for Chuck Jagosinski. Interesting, Bill's ball uh, weight is 14. And you know that's that's getting a little bit on the on the lighter side. Yeah, we talked a little bit about uh, some of the guys like Jim McGarry bowling at 16 pounds, and here you have a 14 pound mm -hmm. ball from Bill Thompson. 29 career 300 games, six 800 nice series shot. for Bill Thompson, a high of 825, and that's three in a row for him. New York State Senior Open doubles champion in his past bowling history with Ray Texter, a guy that we've had on our show before. Absolutely. He's done that twice, scratch tournaments in uh, Erie, Salamanca as well. Uh, 35 years at the USBC Open tournament, and team doubles championships. So a nice resume for Bill Thompson as a longtime bowler. He's got his buddies Bill and Bob here cheering him on. Oop, got that in. Kind of turned late, didn't it? Well, a he, bit? He, he missed his target. He um, cut that one short, so it never made it to uh, to its destination, never made it to its break point. So it bit up early, went left on him, hoping to get a break there on that Brooklyn strike. So after three in a row, Bill will have to play for the spare uh -oh. here. Oh, uh -oh. it missed uh -oh. it. Open in the six for Bill Thompson, and he didn't like it. Fans here didn't like it, and he knows that with Chuck Jagosinski on five strikes on the board, that's, that's a trouble. mistake you cannot afford. And that's six in a row for Chuck Jagosinski. Boy, um, you know, it's 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 interesting, and, and it's, I, I, mean, I was gonna say, when Chuck's locked in, you can tell, and he's terrific, yet he's never been able to put a, uh, well, he's had one eight match winning streak here on our show. And he's also had a five match winning streak, but maybe not as many streaks as I would have expected when, because when he's locked in, he, he's unbeatable. Well, when he's locked in though, you notice sometimes he'll lose his focus and start talking to us and, and you know, get a little personality, and I think that can really take you off your game. Um, he's in his perfect spot right now where he's totally focused and working at hard on every shot. But when he starts joking with us, I mean, it's nice that he's that relaxed, but kind of takes you out of the focus of the game. Yeah, and I think if, if you've watched this show over the years, we've learned that there is no one more locked in and intense <laughs> than Chuck is. So that's a good point when he is not talking to, we don't take it personally, but when he's not talking to us, we know that he is locked in. It'll be a seventh frame spare opportunity for Bill Thompson. And he will get that spare. The action will continue on Beat the Champ in just a minute. Instant Replay on Beat the Champ is brought to you by Transit Lanes and Keglers. Join us for bowling, food, and drinks. Welcome back to Beat the Champ. And he'll slide over to lane seven for frame eight. Well, I always say don't give up and anything can happen, but he's kind of in that point right now that uh, he just needs to get out of Chuck's weight and see if Chuck can uh, finish this off with five more. Mm -hmm. Chuck is perfect through seven frames. Very nice. And that's a great eight frame strike for Bill Thompson. Chuck wasting no time. 
that's the first time they all haven't gone down. A nice ring run. 10 for Chuck Jagosinski ends the run at seven in a row. Chuck does own one of our five 300 games here on Beat the Champ. As a matter of fact, there are two gentlemen in the building that own That's 300 right. games, right. Chuck, and our proprietor here at Central Lanes, Paul Geiger, who did it at the Jamestown Bowling Company in May of 2018. Back to striking for Chuck, back to the ninth frame for Bill. But at this point, Chuck has done what he needs to do to clinch a victory, win two in a row, and advance to next week's show. Very nice. It's always uh, easy for me to talk to Chuck at the end because I just have to, <laughs> I just have to start. Yeah, you get the easier it. job. <laughs> Yeah, Chuck does not like to see me on this <laughs> no, show because that means things did not go well. But I don't take it oh, personal, you're Chuck. Easy for me. But I know you don't like to see me. So third match, side. You're right. <laughs> and a good, nice, easy, smooth stroke on the strike for Bill Thompson here. And he's going to go out and uh, with a bang here as well. But it's going to be a victory for Chuck Jagosinski. Two in a row for Chuck. His 39th beat the champ win in the five years we've had the show going. And it's going to be Chuck that's going to be part of our show for next week against three more bowlers. And on that list of bowlers for next week is another very familiar name, Rob Piccoli, making yet another appearance on our show. So that's what Chuck jagosinski has got in front of him. When Sue and I come back, we'll talk with Bill and with Chuck and get you ready for that show and wrap up week number two here in Salamanca at Central Lanes. More Beat the Champ coming your way right after this. Two fifty nine to two fifteen is the winning score for Chuck Jagosinski over Bill Thompson. Not a bad debut for you, Bill, here on the show. Um, take me through uh, how this all went for you. Well, I was pretty happy with my score. Uh, I got quick with that one after the three bagger and yanked it and you know, opened the door for Chuck and took the pressure off him. He, he kept going. Yeah. Know? Do you go into this match knowing you're bowling up against um, one of the best guys in Western New York? Does that yeah. add to the pressure a little bit? No, just know you got to make good shots, and uh, you know I was making them for a little bit. Um, just made that one bad ball and opened the door for him, and took a little pressure off him, and he kept it going. All right, well, he not a bad, good. yeah, he not good. a bad debut, Paul, for uh, Mr. Thompson here. Oh, absolutely not. Billy's a regular here on Fridays. Uh, I think a critical shot was that ten penny left there that kind of moved like a couple inches or whatever. That was a good oh, shot no. that could have carried. So, you know, I mean, that, that makes the match totally different. But uh, Bill, thanks, man. Appreciate you, thanks, you, you, you support us and everything. Really appreciate it. Thank thanks. You. All right, Chuck is over there where he likes to be hanging out next to you. Yeah, so. I know. Numbers guy, you know, I know you are. 241 average for two games. And uh, on a pair where, you know, they're a little bit different. Seven is hooking a little bit more. What'd you do to figure out seven? Uh, I think um, like right now, three boards difference. Trying to hit 10, if I can miss a little inside. Sometimes I'll set up, other times I'll leave a 10 pin. Well, you found it. You found, um, you know, it looked like seven was gonna be a challenge for you and you really did figure it out there and did a great job. Well, thank you. All right, well, we'll see you next week. Yes, you will. <laughs> <laughs> he is already locked in, right? He doesn't need no chit chat. He's got more bowling to do. And we know that he does because Chuck's going to be back next week. We'll get you ready for that show when Sue and I return to wrap up week two here at Central Lanes in Salamanca. <laughs> Well, we kind of know that look on Chuck Jagosinski's face when he is locked in. He doesn't want to talk to you. He doesn't want to talk to me. He just wants to bowl, and I feel like we're seeing that, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, well, I threw him off by doing the math for him ahead of time because nobody's got that all added up for me. <laughs> but, no, he did a great job averaging 241 on, 
on lanes that are, are, are now getting a little bit tougher. So, you know, he's going to be tough, but we've got some big competition yeah. for him next week. Yeah, that first match, Rob Piccoli mm -hmm. versus Chuck Janikowski is a couple of two of the best, hottest guys in town. Then you throw Mike Kemp in and then another Salamanca guy in Billy Owen. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a fun week next week. And the challenge for you, Janelle, is whenever Chuck is bowling, you're going to write fast because yeah. he goes. I, I mean, I'll be turned around at the scoreboard and I feel this gust of wind behind me. And that's, that's <laughs> Chuck up for his next uh, shot already. So. Uh, Right. You got to be on your toes with that one. She'll work on the speed scoring method <laughs> so she can keep up. We'll see how Chuck can keep up with the competition. Make sure you're with us. That's next week on Beat the Champ from Salamanca.